Hey guys, well, welcome back to this week's episode of the American Landman. Hey, Lucy and I are out on another uh, good example of a transitional piece of property. And we've talked about this in the past of what transitional property is. But this is a great example of it. We're gonna walk it for a client. I'm gonna give some thoughts. I'm gonna fly my drone. I'm gonna do all the deep dive that I normally do. So today we're in Polk County, Wisconsin, just north of the area called Star Prairie. And we're gonna do a Star Prairie deep dive with the Polk 55 on today's episode of the American Landman. Okay, so as you can see, this is in a corn and soybean rotation. Highest, best use in this area, most of the land around this area is agriculture, but it's slowly being converted where these small little homesteads are being sliced off five, 10 acre, maybe 50 acres like we're on, 55 acres. And they're making them into little homesteads and little homes are popping up here and there. And it's a beautiful area. And why are people doing it? Well. We're about 40 minutes or so from the Twin Cities, very communable in an area that is on an easy travel route. So we've talked about this many times. The Fab Five and the five things uh, that add to value to make a property more attractive, more developable, uh, developable <laughs> and therefore a higher price. Number one is the geographic travel corridors. I'm talking about freeways and highways that lead you to these properties. The second thing is demographic growth corridors. Where are people moving? And they're always following these travel routes and off of, you know, in Wisconsin here, you come across that Stillwater lift bridge, you get into Holton area, and all of a sudden it just kind of opens up. The world is green, there's not as much development. But then you come to Somerset, Wisconsin, and you come to New Richmond, Wisconsin, and on every exit, the convenience stores start popping up. Those, that's the demographic growth corridors. And those areas are always more interesting. They're always more desirable because people don't wanna be, you know, they don't wanna be too far away from all the amenities, but they wanna be close enough that they can get to a cup of coffee and some gas stations in a grocery store, but far enough out where they don't have to look at people. And that's what we got here. The next thing is they wanna be uh, one to two hours from these large metro areas. Two hours is almost a recreational getaway for the weekend. If they can get within an hour, for most people nowadays, that's communable. They'll, they can commute that. And if there's internet, well, they can work from home and if they have to go into the office once a week or twice a month or something, they can make that drive. They're willing to exchange that drive distance um, for the opportunity to live out and live and work remotely. The next thing is they wanna be three to five miles off of these large travel routes because they don't wanna hear a noise. They wanna be out on this field like I, I am here, give you a little look around. It's quiet, there's nobody around. You know, there's a pond down in the distance here we're gonna get to. That's what they like, three to five miles off of those travel routes. And the last thing is diversity. Anytime you find a property with multiple biomes, in this case, we got agriculture, we got water, and we got uh, maybe a little bit of timber. That is always the most interesting, the most diverse, the more animals, diversity biomes. Find three, if you can get three types, that's what you wanna look for. And we've got that here. So we're gonna get down here. I'm gonna get you down by the water because I flew my drone over it. I saw a building. Make sure that building is on the property. We can check the, the uh, water edge for development opportunity. And I'm mentally kind of making a note as I walk in, how hard, how far do I have to bring in the utilities? So those are the things that we're gonna look at. We're gonna assess and at the end, as always, I'm gonna give you some thoughts and I'm gonna actually throw a price on this property. So let's go. Come on, buddy, let's go. Buildings like this are always nice to find a property. It's just one less thing that you gotta build. 
And to build something like this, you know, you're probably, gosh, by just looking at the size of it here, I'm gonna say you're a hundred thousand, hundred thousand dollars into uh, a building like, like this easy. In today's market, it might be more because of the material costs. When you're a seller though, you don't get a hundred thousand dollars out of a building that you put a hundred thousand dollars into. It just doesn't work this way, uh, that way. So this type of building is still usable. Uh, it does bring a little bit of value and that value is a little bit hard to predict sometimes by the looks of this just by the condition and we're going to go inside I'm probably going to give this 50,000 bucks value that would be my opinion um, and it'll definitely get you a buyer faster and sometimes that's the benefit of these buildings there's not a lot of value but it definitely gets you a buyer faster so let's go in and we'll take a look inside Okay, so we're inside the building. As you can see, they probably put horses in here at one point. So far, it looks like it's abandoned and maybe used for a little bit of storage. And that's what we have. So, um, still very usable. You know, it would bring more value if there was a uh, um, cement on the floor and electricity, which I see neither. And then sometimes this equipment that can go with a sale you might want for your own use, might be of value to you as well. Um, pretty cool old Farmall 300 tractor, not sure how much that sells for, but pretty cool. A uh, couple pieces of equipment, here's a rototiller implement, and looks like they're just storing some old snowmobiles inside. In this part of the state of Wisconsin, there's a lot of uh, wildlife management areas in this one. This property that we're on actually butts up to one of those areas that'll never be developed uh, and dead giveaway. There's a wildlife management area sign. Now this type of um, asset, I guess we'll call it, definitely adds some value because nobody's ever gonna build back here. It's huntable, you can run dogs on it. There's some trails going through here that may be mowed. You could probably use it almost as your own. And I find that these actually are not commonly used. So it's just kind of like a nice little asset to have this right next door to you. It's quiet, you're left alone, and a lot of people like that. So when you look at properties and you can find wildlife management areas or public areas next to your property, and especially if they're like this where they're not used very often, always a plus. Okay, we're up next to the uh, the water area. Can't quite see it, it's just over the hill. And we find another structure. And what I'm looking down here is I'm trying to figure out if this is an area that could a home can be built. And a lot of times, just looking at the types of foliage we can get tip you off. But in this case, we're elevated and we have an old building. Uh, so this might be a good building area. Let me give you a kind of a view of this area. So it's elevated. My thoughts down here are, you know, getting utilities down here. Will the, will it perk? Will it pass a perk test? My guess is yes, it probably would because it's elevated. Uh, worst case scenario, you're going to put a mound system where they actually have to build the soil up and uh, you'll have your septic kind of on top of the ground in a mound, which costs a little bit more money, but it's definitely doable. So as I'm walking around these properties and I see this, you know, I'm kind of making a mental note. What's it going to take to clean this up? And um, that could be a day's work and you get a light duty tr uh, tractor, probably push this down pretty easy. So it's not a lot of work. There's not a lot of financial liability here. And maybe you just use it until it doesn't, it's not useful anymore and do nothing with it. Just something to take note of. Okay, well now we're going to go down and kind of assess the water frontage just to see what we're dealing with. And again, we're looking at this from buildability, accessibility, quality. Those are the things that make a difference that add value or detract uh, and account for a high price or maybe, you know, not so high price. Let's get down to the water and we'll take a look. Okay, well, we're down on the water's edge and you can see Lucy likes it. And just by looking at her wading around in there, we're only a couple feet deep here. 
Um, I definitely think there's probably get out in the deeper part of the lake here. You might actually get uh, some northerns and some crappies and some bluegills, you know, depends on if the, if it freezes out. Um, but this isn't that typical sandy frontage that everybody like. If it was sandy and it was deeper and clear, that adds a lot of value and definitely is a, a, attractive. This type of water, although it's pleasing to look at and there is some aesthetic value to it, it doesn't have the usability factor. So it doesn't bring those values up like lakefront would be. It'll get advertised as lakefront, but I would argue that it's not lakefront in the sense that most people think about lakefront. They want to dock, they want to swim, they want clear water, they want a beach. This does not have that. So it just doesn't carry the same amount of value as a lake property would. So keep that in mind. Okay, as I was walking the edge of the lake, I kind of looked behind me and uh, sure enough, I see a little elevated spot right here. This is kind of cleared out, open, it's dry, it's elevated. Um, got a nice water view, you're not looking at the neighbor. This is a plus, this looks good. I see, uh, looks like we got some burr oak here. I'm guessing this is burr, maybe, maybe black oak just by looking at the uh, acorns. Again, species that likes upland, likes a little drier, and that kind of tips you off that this may be, may be good. And it's definitely 20 foot elevation change as we come up here. Okay, well, good looking property with uh, a couple things to note here. Um, number one, we walked through the Fab Five, and this has a lot of those attributes of being on geographic travel corridors, near growth and demographic growth corridors within one to two hours of large metro, three to five miles off of travel routes and a lot of diversity. We have at least three biomes here and that's always a plus. Um, What's working against us here a little bit is this is raw land and they're trying to sell it at retail prices at for land values that are already you know developed so if you're the buyer and you look at a property like this you, you got to realize that you're bringing in a lot of the infrastructure you're gonna have to pay for it so you got to account for that when you purchase it right and this is transitional land uh the transitional land is land as we said that is in agriculture, as, as this example is, that might be somebody's future home. And it's always kind of like, you know, how do you come up with this price kind of thinking. The, the current owner thinks that you're gonna come out here and build your horse farm. And you're looking at it, that this is tillable ground. It, you know, why is it so expensive? And then you throw in the lakefront or the waterfront and that kind of that kind of makes everything else a little bit more convoluted and adds to it. This area out here is selling somewhere between $6,500 and $7,500 an acre. And it's listed at over $10,200 an acre. Um, it's listed with a, re a residential agent that does mostly homes. It doesn't recognize maybe all the nuances of land. And surely they're just going along with what the owner thinks and what the owner thinks that somebody's gonna pay for it. Those are the things you gotta take into account. If you buy this property because you love it, you can't find anything else like it, and you've been looking, you just gotta realize if you pay this current price, you're buying your own equity, and you gotta hope the market catches up or the forced equity that you're gonna do through to the property helps catch up and you'll gain that back. A better route would be is to buy your equity on the front end, get it lower at that $6,500 range, and then maybe be right in the sweet spot. And if you just gotta have it, maybe you bump up your offer and you might be in that 7,000, 75, maybe eight grand an acre. And you can still feel okay about it because you love it. It's perfect. It's what you've always wanted. So those are the things that you got to think about when you're looking at properties like this that are in transition stages. It's a transitional property. I hope you found that interesting. It's surely adaptable to wherever you are that you're watching this video. These same types of opportunities exist and this is how you have to look at it to make some sense out of the market because it's crazy. The prices are all over the place because I did the research. Hey, if you're looking for property in Western Wisconsin or you'd like advice on property anywhere in the US, I'm glad to help. You can give me a call. I'll get you in touch with a land specialist. And if you wanna come with me and walk these properties and see it through my eyes, then I welcome the opportunity to show you around. I'm Neil Hogger, and I'm a land specialist for Whitetail Properties Real Estate. I want to be your guy in the land business. Thanks for watching. You've been watching The American Landman.